All right, guys, it's uh, Monday. Uh, not a whole lot as far as uh, field work. We're kind of caught up now. Um, but anyway, I just installed the headliner in the roof of the uh, 986. Some of you guys know I had bought that uh, over the winter and I was gonna install it once the weather got warm. Well, it's warm, we're on our way to a heat wave here. This is the foam spray adhesive that I had talked about. I was gonna give it a try and let you guys know what it was like to work with and uh, how well it worked. Um, this stuff, I think, we will give it, <laughs> I don't wanna just use something once and give my uh, feedback on it. The, the headliner has to stay in the tractor for at least a couple of years before I'd say, yeah, that was pretty good stuff. But anyway, you're not gonna be able to see it, but it is installed. Um, I did not have to do what I thought I was going to have to do. I was going to get a sheet of uh, plywood about the same uh, size as the headliner. And I was going to uh, put my bottle jack here with a 2x4 and have the plywood jacked against the ceiling to hold it there uh, overnight. But this stuff dried uh, almost right away. And it's up there. <laughs> And I think it's gonna stay there. So I'm just gonna let it let it go and see how good this stuff sticks. If it falls down, I'll have to rethink this, but um, it's not going anywhere. And I also took the time, you won't be able to see it, it's really dark. I also had some foam left over that I put these panels in, these foam panels behind the clutch and the brake pedal. Um, just cut them out, sprayed the foam on, stuck them fast. Uh, so even though I don't have a cab, uh, it still makes a difference for the sound deadening and the, the it's not such a tinny sound when you're driving on the road or through the field. So that's installed and so are the lower two panels. Uh, I can't think anywhere else that I would put a piece of foam possibly behind the seat, but I don't know if I have enough. So we can play around with this, but yeah, this stuff really surprised me for what spray adhesive is. Um, it's usually not very good. This is uh foam fast from 3m i got this right from the uh, company that sells the cabs um it says it has foam tearing strength so if you ever need to take it out it should tear the foam but we'll see what happens and uh, i'll keep you guys posted but as far as the install it was pretty darn easy um we'll see that it stays there and uh go from there so yeah that worked out pretty good there so all right uh, on to the next thing okay the next thing i want to look at here is uh Uh, looks serious, but it's not. The linkage underneath has come unhooked here. And uh, uh, <laughs> confession to make, this actually happened back in the early spring. And uh, being that I had such limited time this year with working and everything else going on, uh, I did the lazy thing and I just switched the remote valves to the one that works and just let this one go. But now we're caught up and uh, we want to take care of some of these little issues uh, to get everything addressed before we're ready to go again. So underneath here, I need to crawl under. I'll try to show you what it looks like, but we want to put a new uh, cotter pin and a washer to help hold it so we don't, uh, it doesn't happen again. Uh, all right, so I'm crammed in here, but <laughs> just to give you an idea what it looks like, here's where your, where am I at? Okay. Here's where your arm is from up top in the cab. This is your valve here, and uh, this one's leaking a little bit. Um, but you see the, there's the inside one. Here's the linkage hanging there. Boy, that's, yeah, it, everything's a little bit war here, but um, we're just gonna stick it back together here. If we can one hand it, okay. So now I just need a cotter pin and a washer and we're back in business. All right, so to save anybody the trouble, it is a real tiny cotter pin for that. It's only like an eighth of an inch is all I can get uh, through there, but uh, that's kind of what the washer's for. The washer will hold it as it's being worked, but we're good to go now. Um, then I just uh, went over all the grease fittings, so it's greased and uh, I guess on to the next thing here. The uh, headliner is still in place. All right, guys, not to change the subject, but it's a different day here. Uh, if you know anything about me and uh, watching my channel, you, you probably know how much I like using 
uh, these uh, daikon tillage radishes um, in bad spots of the farm. Last year I experimented with them. I decided to try it again this year. Uh, we did get a lot more this year. I got 50 pounds uh, to spread in areas like this. Okay, so why do I have areas like this? Well, this spot here, when the farm was being logged out, uh, I don't know if it's, it's go, gotta be going on four or five years. This is a high compaction area um, because they had their big uh, tree chipper. They had like a tub grinder sitting backed in there. They were chipping up the branches. And I think this is where they back down the uh, truck bodies to get filled with the wood chips. So there was a lot of truck traffic, skitter traffic, all that kind of stuff right in this general area here. I don't want to plow it or subsoil it for one subsoiling with the rocks that we have. That's going to be a disaster. For two, plowing it up. This is a very high erosion area. I mean, it just, it, you can't see steepness on camera again, but this just drops off here. So with areas like this, um, by the end of August, this is all going to be weeds growing up in here. I am planting these a lot earlier, uh, and that's on purpose. I want them to grow to their full maturity and uh, try to break up some of this ground. And if you know anything about the radishes, especially these tillage radishes, they add a ton of organic matter and uh, basically like a new soil to work with. So that's what we're up to today. I just did all the spaces down in the bottom land, and let me get this covered, and we have some other spots to go to yet. All right, so uh, in addition to being steep, this is a real high erosion area. Also, if you walk out through there, you can see where the dirt kind of just on the surface started washing downhill. I think these things will uh, help hold the ground here and uh, keep the weeds at bay. Now, as far as the seeding rate, uh, last year, if you remember, I went way too thick. But that was spreading them on and then dragging a drag over the top. So they got planted pretty well. Uh, these are just being broadcast on. I'm trying to put enough on, but not too much. And the next two days, we're uh, in for some pretty good rain. So that's why I'm doing this today. It'll rain two days, hopefully work them enough that they can sprout and uh, cover this bare ground. Uh, I'm not a fan of having bare ground. Uh, any time of the year, but we'll see how it does. We'll we'll monitor this. All right, so this is a soybean field. Uh, you might ask why there's no soybeans here. This is groundhog damage and deer damage. You'll see I did spread some of that straw here, loose uh, hay, organic matter. Uh, let that fill in. Some straw chaff, some hay chaff. So we're gonna go up and down the row here and put radishes right along the tree line. Um, what these and the fans run to cool off the four wheeler. The other thing I find with these, and it's, it might just be in my mind or not, but deer absolutely love radishes. They absolutely love them. And I think it serves as a distraction. If you plant some radishes here and there, the deer are gonna go where the best feed is and maybe they'll be less interested in the soybeans. I mean, I'm sure they're still gonna eat some. It's still gonna be a problem, but with radishes, uh, it might help. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, the only thing that'll help really is no deer, but. I'm going to spread these here and uh, we'll see if they come up. All right, so in another case like this here, we have bare ground, we have compaction. This is where all the equipment kept driving through for the waterway project. Um, I don't know how well these are going to come up in a case like this where the ground is packed solid, but it is a high moisture area, so we'll see. We'll go along the edge here and uh, get rid of this bare ground if we can. Uh, if I don't, put something here. It's just going to be weeds, so... Um, at least radishes are beneficial. All right, again, uh, compaction, waterway work, uh, all this new dirt and uh, uh, clay from the uh, from the project here. So I'm gonna go up through here, through any of these thin spots. The corn really had trouble here, and uh, I don't think it's gonna amount to a whole lot here. So uh, out through there, it gets nice, but not here where this project was. So <coughs> try to get something planted here anyway.